Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Take One after a long period of uh, not having any videos up. Um, this time around, uh, I want to go through something different as we're going to be uh, looking at something uh, in the hardware realm rather than uh, working with software. And uh, I want to look, I want to take this chance to uh, take a look back to the older pieces of uh, gear that I've had over uh, since I've since I started this uh, live live show live performance of electronic music, and so what we're going to be uh, going over this time around this the uh, the Pioneer EFX 500. This is a pretty old uh, effects box from Pioneer, as we all know. There's there, there has all uh, already been um, the one, uh, the one thousand, and there's a uh, the newest one, which is the RMX one thousand. The uh, the one before that is the uh, EFX one thousand, uh, an, an upgraded version of this particular unit. The RMX, however, is a newer, uh, newer FX box, which has a different look, uh, different feel to it, which of course uh, I won't be discussing today. So. Uh, what is the EFX 500? Is it um, is it irrelevant already? Given that there are already a few uh, or a newer versions of this, not really. Uh, I believe that this still has a place. So if a place in your uh, setup, so if you're looking for uh, to upgrade your your like adding an FX box to your setup, I and you're on a budget or or you you're just looking for some minor things to add on to your setup i i'd recommend uh looking around and if you can find an uh an efx 500 that's in good condition then uh, i think it's it's going to be a good buy for you so what we have here um is pretty basic in a, in a sense we have on our left we have our beat effects then we have our jog effects to your to our right okay and then on top we have our um, isolator effects. So I'll just go through quickly one by one, and um, I will demo some some a loop I made in uh, an, in an app, and then uh, I'll, I'll I'll be performing a bit just just so that you can also have a feel of uh, how I use the particular effects here in in the context of my performing. Okay, we start with uh, there's an input level, and then, then, of course, as, as I said, we have the isolator here. So uh, there's a there's a kill switch, which is the the on, uh, the lock mode, or just the the quick, uh, the quick kill switch that brings it back to the off position. And then we have our, of course, our low, mid, and high, and then our effect out level. Now going to our left, as I mentioned, we have our um, beat beat effects. So you have delay, echo, pan, flanger, and transform. So it's just it's just a matter of selecting which effect you want to use at a particular time. And then uh, what's nice also is there's the effect frequency button selection here. That will uh, what what's lit up is the uh, frequency or the frequency band that you want to affect in your particular track. So I'll, I'll also go over that once we have once I have some music playing, and then we have our we have our, our switch here as I mentioned. Um, it also it has, also has uh, it also has um, the lock or on switch, and then the and then, uh, immediate uh, uh, the the quick the quick uh, or inter or in or the quick the switch quick here. Switch. Whatever it's called, <laughs> and then <coughs> we have our depth knob here, just to uh, select how how much of the effect you want. And there's and there's below here we have a mix mix knob of the original material and the affected material. And then uh, we have a little knob here, which is a monitor uh, knob, just for your monitoring if you have headphones plugged in into your effects box. And then, <coughs> okay, we have the time sig the time here signature. So we have a 
four one two one you know just just uh one one three one one half one fourth so it's it's really uh uh how the size of the b the the loop that you're that y that you wanna take to add the effect to okay and then we have the bpm mode we have auto which allows the machine to choose the bpm for you and uh detect you know the bpm on its own and then we also have midi what's nice with this uh, unit is uh it also has a m uh, midi in and out so uh when i use it live especially when it was still doing uh hardware boxes heavily i i just use the midi uh the MIDI input and just send the clock here. And then also I'll tap tempo, which of course, for example, um, you're using auto, uh, just, just just use the tap and it automatically switches there. You don't need to press the BPM mode just to get to into tap, okay? And then we have uh, a knob here that uh, we can move to uh, gradually move into the time on its own in small increments okay all right and up here the 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 jog effects um you have another depth knob we have here jet zip wah ring fuzz and of course the switch again and then we also have a uh, hold here hold button uh i, I will try to move so can if w once you s you say what you see the l the red lights if i move the jog dial it it just move the red lights now moved with it right, but if I if I let go of the jog dial it just goes back to normal, okay. The nice thing with hold is if I move it here to the higher range, and I release the jog dial it it's kept at where where it's at at the moment I released it, and then I when I when I will go when when I, when I want to go back to the original I just turn turn on the uh, turn off the hold button. Okay, so we have jog memory here. Once we press this here and we do some movements, it uh, memorizes our movements, and then we can trigger it. So, for example, I press the uh, M here, and then I move up, then down, then up. As you can see, the red lights. So when I press, when I press the play button here, it will do the f same effect without me moving the jog dial. Pretty neat. Okay, so uh, let's get to it. Uh, I'm doing a I'm I'm using a loop that I created just for this demo, uh, which I did in an i in an uh, in an iPhone app called iDrum. So uh, which I also want to do a little review on eventually. But uh, for this demo, I hope you also enjoy the the loop that I used. So uh, we'll just be doing a loop and hopefully. It won't sound as tiring because we'll be doing effects over it as we progress. Okay, so we can start with the isolators. I'll kill the loads. it and I'm just having a you know just an effects frenzy so I can just oops sorry um I can keep it at high and just trigger it like oh, where's the, the 
sounded funny, but you, know, you get the, you get the idea. Uh, what I what I mostly use here in the jog section is most of the time is the wall. So uh, I usually just I I just do uh, movements so like when I'm doing some build ups, something like that, or um, I just keep it locked. Uh, like a little higher then I just something like that okay um, then the ring modulator uh, adds a little ring to it depending on the the low frequency that's coming into your effects so as you can see, so we can start, maybe we can start with the low. I usually uh, use this most during uh, my faster techno sets, where I can just add the ring as part of a peaking.
which just simply uh, fans the music left to right. So I'm sure you heard that if you're using us uh, stereo speakers while listening to this. And then of course we have flanger. Uh, what I tend to do use uh, to do while using the flanger is to turn off the low frequency because uh, it usually just it brings up uh, once the flange uh, goes down, it the it brings up the low frequency so much that uh, it, it might damage your headphones or speakers. So I usually just uh, turn it off. So, uh, so once I dialed in uh, a really fast uh, uh, LFO or the sweep of the the flanger, you, you can you can use it as a as another effect. And you can just bring in the mix on how much of, on the amount, and you can just bring it one. Transform is a more of a just a gate or a cut cut function. as a looper okay it's not as an it's not as accurate as I'd like it to be but um, I use it to transition into the next song just so that my box can my other box for example I'm using a hardware sequencer or groove box and I can move on to the next song and I'm still hearing the last part of the song because I looped it here or I, I sampled it and I, I, I have it running so it acts more like a DJ set there where, where uh, the last track is still playing and then the new ones coming in so that's how I do it so uh, as I switch the pattern on the groove box before I switch it I sample it here in the EFX and then switch so we have the old pattern playing so this is how you do it all you have to do is just uh, choose a 4-1 setting on your echo Remember, it's the echo, okay? And then you just trigger it just in time with the music. So, as you can hear, it's already flanging because it's already sampled and it's playing together with the existing uh, music, okay? So, I'll turn off the old one. Uh, I'll turn off the signal coming in. Okay. So, now what's playing now is the loop that we made. So you can just imagine the this one's playing and then the new one's coming in which has a different beat and sound and it's just like a DJ set even if you just have one source. Okay, um, now you have to be aware also that it may drift later on. So just the first 16, 32 bars you can still manage to have it sync together with the new track but uh, it will tend to sync so just bear in mind 
and then of course um, you can cut it down to uh, to to a small part and we will end it here and I'll, I'll just add some notes So there, that's how we finish our set. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, the the thing is, uh, once you go down with the echo and the sample here, just a, li a little note, once you go down, you cannot go back up and expect the full loop to still be there. So once you cut it down to smaller pieces, it's, it's already gone, okay? So that's one of the main differences of the EFX 500 from the 1000 where where in the 1000 you can still go back to the to the full loop and ex and you can still play around with it so there i, I hope uh you picked up a thing or two and um enjoyed this little demo of mine and um uh, you can subscribe to the channel and uh pick up a thing or two from the other tutorials that i'm doing and um i'll see you next time thank you very much and god bless <laughs>